starting the timer. Ready? One, sure. Three. Go. One, two, three. All right. Timer starting. Let's go. All right, so we're done, except for the fact that I'm going to turn the tractor on and I'm gonna retract these so that my uh, hydraulics aren't showing and it also gives me more space to put, tuck it against the wall. And I'm gonna pull this. We are gonna clean these up off camera because uh, I do have a bit of a leak in the manifold, but uh, basically, that's it. Okay, keep moving this around. <laughs> Look how cute it looks. Oh, stubby. That's what she said. <laughs> Some in here. Is that a U joint? Yep. One down here. So I found it much easier when you're putting on the front K connect is to run your hoses through the pigtails first instead of trying to feed them through. If you look at Orange is My New Green's tr uh, channel, he just put out a video of brackets that he made that's way easier to put the uh, hydraulic hoses in. Go check it out. See how easy it is to put the hydraulic hoses through those hooks? A lot easier than uh, with those pigtails. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that we put the hooks up here on the supports and then the support rod goes through the bottom here. There we go. And then the rod goes through and the pin goes through the center here. Just like that. And now we can hook up the drive shaft underneath. So for my setup, I have the B expanded underbelly protection and we just have to undo these spring clips on one side and these hooks will come off. So let's do that now. Quick disconnect. It's also a good time to go through here and make sure that everything is uh, looking good. So we're gonna, when we put the drive shaft on, we're just gonna grease it up. One, two, three. One, two, three, good. So you put the spline on first. So now the collar is spring loaded. So we can put 
pull the collar, slip it in. And when you hear the lock, it's done. So now when you're hooking up the front, it's always advisable to leave this back. So that disconnects your drive shaft. So that when you hook up with the hydraulics, um, it's not connected. And the last thing you can do is, is hook it up. So I'm just going to clean that off because it's a bit rusty. Is that cloth with the uh, goo on it? The less goo. All right, so Aiden's gonna push that into place. I'm gonna start the tractor and we are going to uh, drive up and connect to the snowblower. in the place okay there you go and now you can engage the spring the dry shaft and uh, give it a spin. just give it a spin all right the next thing is going to do is we're going to hook up the electric chute deflector which is just a window motor for a car but it works fantastic so we'll hook up that to here and we'll hook up the other lines to run the rotation these ones are a pain in the butt, so I only go through one of the pigtails, and uh, then I just use a, sometimes a zip tie it to the other ones. Eh. There go. There you go. There we go. And then the last thing is the plug. Nice Deutsch connector. Those connectors are really solid. And then what I do is I connect the two other ones together so that they keep the dirt out of the caps. There. Perhaps a good size. Yeah. Make sure you skimp out on your zip ties. You want to be frustrated when you're trying to use zip ties. So you make sure they're uh, always tight when they work. And it's important, make sure you cut these at a, an acute angle. So if you're ever down here in the middle of winter, you can scrape your gloves or your skin. All right, so that is the snowblower. And there we go, we're done. Here we go. This is first snow blowing of 2022. It is a gorgeous day. It's about minus five. I'll put that in Fahrenheit below for you. We had just switched over the front snow blower on the Kubota, but we haven't switched over the back yet. I was hoping to finish off the water trenching video. That's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna snow plow with the bucket on the back and then we'll switch out for the box blade uh, when I'm done. Uh, we've got some people coming over and I just want to get this cleaned up. So let's have some fun. Let's get the first snow blowing of 2022 started. Thanks very much for watching. All right, so one of the issues I had was when I finished the uh, trenching video, I was expecting to go back out the next day, but 
I wasn't able to. So now the tractor is full of mud and dirt and debris. I don't like leaving it that way, but now it's too cold to use the water. So I'm just gonna use the blower. All right, here we go. Alright, so that's going okay, but, oh my lens is fogging up, it's going okay, but uh, the snow is, there's not enough snow to really use the snowblower effectively. So what's happened was I picked up some slush in the chute, and now I can't, uh, there's not enough snow to eject it. So it's not that it's underpowered or it's not working correctly, I just picked up a bit too much slush at the end of the road and now no snow is making it into the propellers so I didn't break anything if I had more snow it would force it out but uh, I have to go get a, a stick or something so this is a perfect job for the orange brush I usually leave this uh, on my tractor but Aiden stole it for his car so See, it's all slushy. The other thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to line the inside of the chute. It's all rusted and pitted from uh, hitting rocks. So I will spray it with some kind of like a pledge or some kind of turtle wax. It works really well. So let's see if that cleaned out enough.
All right, so that was the first snow blowing of the season. Um, if you're in the market for a tractor that can do snow blowing, I highly recommend the BX. And I highly recommend the front mount snowblower, the BX2822. It's the heavy duty version, really stoutly made. It doesn't have a chain drive on the side, it has a gearbox, which I think is a lot more stout. It's 55 inches wide and uh, it's just a beast. I can throw snow from this area past those hedges. So that's like 65 feet. So later in the season, make sure you're, you're subscribed so you can watch when I'm blowing snow from this area and it's just shooting way over there into the, into the hedges. So I'm just gonna take some of the snow off of this and then we're gonna get ready to switch over the backhoe to the box blade. So I'm really happy with the uh, tractor. Glad to have the first snow done. We're just gonna switch over the backhoe to the box blade. So stay tuned for that. All right, so that's how you take the backhoe off of the BX23S. Now we're just gonna put the uh, three-point attachments on it. And then we'll go down and grab the box blade from the gravel pad, so let's do that now. Now, the easiest way to figure out how you put these uh, three-point arms on, because it has to go in a specific way, is to spend about half an hour with it until you get it. And then you're guaranteed to get it. And it's also important to keep all your pieces separately all over your shop. It makes it very easy to find when you need all the little pieces that you keep losing. The other thing to do is just take your time, not in a rush. It takes you all day to do this. It's just uh, time you didn't get to do something else. Did you? didn't want to do in the first place. Dishes or laundry. So you're in the shop, you're having a good time. As David from RCAF Polar Express always says, it's tractor therapy. So go check his channel out. He's doing some amazing Mahindra maintenance on his machine right now. And then the back pin and clip goes on. So that's the three point hitch on. Let's go down and get the box blade. We'll get that attached and then winter mode will be complete. I'm gonna try driving forward just a bit. 
so that I can see if I can tilt this forward so I don't have to undo the screws of this. So let's move you over here and you watch out and make sure that I'm not going to tip the whole thing forward and uh, crush my tractor. So you watch that, make sure this comes forward a bit. I only have to go a couple of inches. wind there we go we're done and just before we go i will adjust the, the top link because what i want is when i'm scraping the driveway i don't want the front scraper to dig in i want the the back edge to pull the snow i don't want to be i don't want to be scraping into the snow so when i get it back on the driveway i'll make sure that my box blade is tilted back and you do that but i by lengthening the top link. The other thing that I have to make sure of is when I'm on the driveway, that my box blade is flat with the ground and not tipped either or. And you make that adjustment using the side link here. And then I will also make sure that my stabilizer tensioning bars are tight so I don't get any side to side motion. So in the past, what has happened is those get loose and then it smashes against my the body of my tractor because there's too much uh, play in it. I will be switching these out for pin style ones. They're much better. I just haven't done that yet. So uh, that's how we switch over the implements to winter. And uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. What did you do on your land today?